In this video, I want to go over why the M1 MacBook Air is still one of the best devices till this day in 2024. Released in 2020, I purchased mine in a rose gold color because there weren't any other MacBook Airs or MacBook Pros and still aren't to this day that are being offered in rose gold. Now, I wanted to go to the MacBook Air because I wanted to go to a smaller device like my MacBook Air, which I had purchased in 2013. That lasted me for about like five to six years before I made the transition to a MacBook Pro. Now, before the M1 chip was introduced, Macs actually used Intel chips and that had its own problems because what often I had experienced and many other users was heating issues your fans going crazy as a result of the heating issues and also a rather sluggish and laggy experience overall. I remember those old devices just heating up out of nowhere just because I had like Safari and a Spotify or a Microsoft Word open up and that for me wasn't ideal because then it'd be no different than me having a gaming laptop for Windows and having that overheat and having the fan fires on all cylinders. But with the introduction of the new ARM chips, I've played games on this, I've had Safari opened up on this and on my MacBook Air, it would just barely start to heat up, especially during summers. In winters, it was actually quite well off, it was fine. And so for me to go from Intel MacBook Airs and also using Windows devices personally and professionally to go to the M1 MacBook Air was a massive jump in terms of efficiency, heat management, and just power delivery. All of which is done in such a small form factor. Another thing that I have to talk about in terms of the M1 MacBook Air is actually its battery life over the three year to four years that I've had it. It's actually been excellent because over that three year period, I still feel like it's almost, it can't be exactly the same, but I feel like it's almost the same as when I first bought it. What does that mean? So it means that it provides me with all day usage on multiple productivity apps that I open up, YouTube, opening up uh, Safari, opening up Spotify, all those apps that I open up, it still comes in at the end of the day with a little bit of juice left for you to charge it and have it run the next day. But of course, battery life over the span of a couple of years will depend on the user, how often you charge it, and your overall environment. Are you using it in a country or a space that generally has a lot of heat? Because if it does, then obviously the battery life will drastically decrease over that span of time. But seriously, sometimes I take for granted how good I have it with the MacBook Air's battery life when I then go to like an Ultrabook, which, you know, on a Windows version should have pretty good battery life. But I, then I see probably half of its battery life wiped in the first, you know, two to four hours of usage with a couple of words or Excel spreadsheets open. So with how great the battery life is, I can totally see how this becomes a really attractive option, because it is for me, for anyone who's looking for a new laptop, who's looking for pretty good performance and that all day battery life, because that's what this MacBook Air has in folds of multiples over the span of years. Now, when it comes to portability, look, not a hot take at all, it makes total sense, but the more portable a device can be, the greater its use case. And for that reason, portability becomes such a great asset or a great selling point for many users out there. Unless your device is in an office space like a desktop or maybe a Mac mini or a Mac Pro where it's gonna be stationary in an office space and you're gonna be only using it within that space, then yeah, sure, portability doesn't matter at all because you're just gonna be in the one spot. But if you're moving about, looking to use it in the kitchen because you're looking up recipes, looking to use it on the couch because you're looking up TV shows or watching TV and doing some work as well on your lap, putting it on the couch, putting it in different spaces and whatnot, I find that it's really sluggish to actually carry around something that's even 14 inches, 15, and 16 and definitely anything beyond that becomes really, really sluggish. Apart from the multiple use cases that you can use a more portable device in, you can also fit the MacBook Air in many of your accessories that you use on an everyday basis. So think about a backpack, for example, you don't have to carry a more bigger backpack to put it within. It also means that you reduce the bulkiness of things that you have to carry overall. A bigger device means that you have to generally carry a larger charger to power it as well. And so when I carry the MacBook Air, I honestly put it into any bag whatsoever. Sometimes I don't even put it in a bag. I'll just carry it in my hand because it's that much easier to carry around and use. And from my personal experience, I've used this at universities. I've used this as cafes. I've traveled with it instead of the MacBook Pro. There's just, I, I can't even name how many places I've been to using the MacBook Air just because it's so much easier to carry. And it does basically 90% of everything that I needed to do, which makes it a really great device to integrate into any type of lifestyle that you might have. I think another selling point going into 2024 for the MacBook Air is the fact that it's the only one that has that wedge-shaped design. 
all the other MacBooks have gone to a more like, like think of like a thicker iPad, that rectangular, squarish, off design. Whereas the 2020 MacBook Air is the only one that has kept that wedge shaped design, which makes it quite unique and stand out from the other MacBooks in the line. Another point to make is when you hold it in one hand, it's actually way more comfortable than having to hold a rectangular laptop that I have in my 16 inch MacBook Pro. The way that it curves just naturally allows your hand to wrap around the device and get a good hold of it. And I've said it before, but just the brighter rose gold tone, you just don't get it anymore because all the other MacBooks moving forward, it seems like they're starting to get into a darker and darker and darker tone. And that's where the market is shifting anyway, so I don't blame Apple for this at all. Now on my device personally, you can see slight discoloration where my palm would actually just rest. And it's been getting worse for the past three years. I honestly don't mind it too much. I can only see it in certain lights and certain angles. And I just see it as aging like, you know, good leather or fine wine. It just ages and it just has this little mark of my palm resting on it. And I'm okay with that. There are a couple other things that I haven't mentioned, like the retina display, the speakers that just absolutely kill it. Like you compare it to any other device in its price range, still in 2024, and you'd be very hard to find other good competition. And some of the competition, it's not even close. The only thing I wish the device had was another USB-C port on the other side, because it's only on the left-facing side where you have the two USB-C ports, and that creates awkward situations when you have to charge it, and you know the cable has to like turn and twerk a angle of a specific way to get in there, depending on where you're sitting. Or alternatively, you have to move as the user to make sure that it's angled properly, um, so that you can charge it as well. And so, I wish there was one on the other side. Honestly, it's not a big deal considering that they have to fix an aux cord and the way that it's shaped and angled. I'm sure they could have done it, but you know, whatever. Apart from that though, there's really not much to dislike about the MacBook Air. It kills it in nearly all departments for the average user. Screen, battery life, sound, efficiency, heating, all those things that I've just spoken about before, those are things that really matter to the average user. If you're looking for something a lot more powerful, I think you already know what you're looking for. You need the MacBook Pro, you need a certain graphics card, you need a certain amount of RAM. You already know what you're looking for. But for the average user who's looking to upgrade from their Intel MacBook, who's looking to upgrade from a Windows laptop, who's looking to just get a laptop for their first time, I think this is such a safe bet. And when you talk about the resale value, it adds an extra tier or an extra reason as to why it becomes a great option leading into 2024. And finally, if you go on their website, the fact that they're still selling this after three to four years should tell you it's a great buy.